Welcome AAPC members to another I am AAPC interview. I am Alex McKinley, AAPC Alex from the AAPC National Office, and we are with Heather Hoke today. Hello, Heather. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you. And with I am AAPC, we are here to learn the stories of AAPC members. And Heather, we want to know your story. So why don't you just um, start off by telling Telling us about yourself, um, where you're from, and a little bit about your history in the medical coding field. Um, I am from Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Um, I actually got into medical coding, billing, the whole medical realm um, by a mishap, actually. Um, I, in my senior year in school, thought I was going to be a nurse, so I took my EMT, did all the hands-on and so forth. Um, actually had a lot of experience in the ED department, um, thought that was the, the world I was going. Um, started working in some CNA work, was accepted into the University of uh, Pennsylvania in Philadelphia, and graduated and decided I didn't want to travel away, got scared. So actually just was a manager for a little while at a local Kmart. There was a mass hire at a billing department. And my aunt said, why don't you go try that? It's still medicine and you won't have to travel until you feel more comfortable. So I walked in the door for an interview. They said, you know what they did, I didn't know what a CPT code was, didn't know what diagnosis code was, um, but um, they asked me some questions and they hired me. Um, I did claims research there and worked my way up through to, uh, to a coder okay. and had a fascination with cardiology. Wow. Um, I was there for about five years and the cardiology group that was there left and took their billing back, their coding back and everything. And I was ready for a change. So I called that office manager, office manager and said, I was really interested in working in cardiology. And she said that uh, you have no office experience. You know, we can't even consider you without that. And we wouldn't bring you in as a coder. You need to start out, you know, entry level. Well, I knew where my heart was. so. I uh, found a position um, at a family practice. I worked there for six months. I did my time. And after my six months, I called the cardiology practice back, told her I did six months, would I be considered? She said, let's talk. So she interviewed me and hired me on the spot. Wow. It was not what I wanted. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was not, I just wanted in the door. Um, it was 20 hours a week and it was front desk um, with the possible, I was, I was presented with the possibility of coding. But you had coded previously. Yes. Yes. Wow. But they okay. were not to hire for coders. Um, co coders. You, when you're in a practice, you work your way up. They were filled, that type of thing. But I took it. I, this is, it's what I wanted. Um, did the 20 hours a week. Um, one of the checkout secretaries walked out and they said, do you want the next stage? And I did that for four years. And in that interim, created a really good relationship with the physicians. And they gradually um, started having me code their, their, their cases, um, trained me in different realms. Um, I was there for five years around that mark. And a, there was an incident where a biller um, left unexpectedly. And they said, do you want to, do you want a billing position? Okay. Heather, what's interesting to me is I think um, there are many coders who are introverts and they dislike the, um, the life of just coding away, but mm -hmm. re relationships are so important at every level. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So I took that billing position, um, did that. And in the intertwining of it, um, you coded at the same time, you know, EKGs um, and so forth. Um, just, I just really pushed for what I wanted every day. Um, and um, the billing manager was terminated 
the physician, um, the head physician pulled me in the office and they said, we're terminating her. Um, the second she's terminated, we would like you to go and clean up the mess. And I said, really? And I jumped on it. <laughs> I jumped on it. Um, I did that then for an interval, um, started meeting with one of the physicians on a regular basis to get my certification in cardiology then and get my certification in the CPC. And um, I did that for an interval. And then- well, um, Let me ask you this, Heather. So how did you learn about AAPC and our credentials? Um, because you had, you had uh, a short time of um, working as a coder and then you started from scratch again. Um, at what point did you hear about AAPC? Was it uh, where we referred to you um, or did you just find us on your own? Um, if the, so when I got my certification, it was early 2000. And um, re, one of my mentors for an interval was uh, Renee Connor and Robin Zink. Uh, and they had said, you know, you if you want to get anywhere, you really need to get your CPC. So um, Renee actually um, had a, a course and I took the course through her for, I think it was three months while I was working at the cardiology office. Um, to get my CPC, and then when I wanted to car, then I wanted to specialize in cardiology. There wasn't a court at that time. I don't even think um, there was. There wasn't much online, you know, yeah. options for the CPC. Yeah. So uh, one of the physicians that I worked for had taught at Penn State, and I met with him every morning at six a.m. to learn mm. the vascular system. Okay. Um, so this That's is as you were preparing for the CPC exam? Yep, it was all I was preparing for the CPC and then mm -hmm. I knew I wanted both certifications. So I was preparing for both along the way. Okay, and uh, so you end up taking the CPC in time. Um, what was that experience like? It was intimidating, I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. <laughs> um, we let our nerves get ahead of us. Um, yeah. but um it's very it's a very organized structure um the way they have everything's everything proctored um the time allotment you had you had to know your stuff but um the time allotment was was fair um and it was definitely a challenge you had to know all aspects of everything um all your systems and so forth but um I think the hardest part of the exam was the wait for the results because I think <laughs> it took weeks. Yes. So every day um, you would, well, you knew it wasn't even there, you know, via mail. Um, so, but you still checked it every day. So, well, that's um, that's interesting. It is that um, they weren't delivered virtually like they are now back then. You had to wait yeah, in the snail mail. Yes. So the mail, you know, you're waiting for that piece of paper in the mail to say if you, you know, passed or failed. And uh, yeah, when I passed, it was, ugh, yeah, that was a, that's a memory, you know, within itself. So each of those steps is, as you proceed, it's just awesome. Yeah, well, that's great. And did you uh, take that cardiovascular specialty exam shortly after the CPC exam? I took it shortly after, and I think I took it too soon because my First time I took the cardiology, I felt really good about it, but I failed by two points. Okay. Oh, yeah. I remember that too. I, I got those results and I cried, I cried for oh. two days. Oh, and like was, so much so much effort is it, it put yeah. into preparing, right? So yes. all this blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah. So um, you went through that crying. I went through that stage of, I don't know if this is for me. Um, <laughs> Maybe I'm gonna work, you know, maybe I'll just work at a factory um, <laughs> through all those stages. And then um, after about a week of coming to grips with it, I um, contact, you know, talk to the physician and he's like, let's meet again um, and we'll get through this. Um, during that time, I was approached for by a company in Philly and they said they needed someone to oversee cardiology coding. Um, I said, well, I failed my test by two points. We'll tutor you. We'll work oh, with you. So, so I cool. said, okay. Um, I took that job and left the cardiology practice, which that that took me a while to make that decision. Um, 
and they had a uh, IR coder, Erin, and uh, she sat with me. We became really good friends and she showed me the vascular system and some IR elements that I didn't have experience in, which is where I've, you know, had my, you know, drop in score. And um, I took the exam again and I got, it was an A and wow. I, you know, I went from failing by two points to getting a score that I wasn't expecting. Um, so it was well worth it. It taught me a lesson. Wow. And it's amazing to see um, other coders and professionals took you under their wing to help uh -huh. guide you along. They wanted you to succeed. Yes. And we have that different ways now. And I, I know there are, there may be coders out there who have those uh, personal interactions, but we have that virtually. Um, at, at what point or do, have you ever been um, very involved with your local chapter, Heather? I've been very involved with my local chapter actually before it even existed. Okay. Um, what was it, late 90s? Late 90s, early 2000. Um, Lancaster only had the option to go to Harrisburg and I don't remember if York existed yet or not, but um, Robin Zink and Renee again were starting up the Lancaster chapter, approached me and said, would you assist in setting this up? Um, I was part of the setting up of, of it. Um, they all ran for office. I was like, I'm not sure if I wanna be in office right away, but I would you know, volunteer and do things where, where I could. And um, I think like the second year it was in place, Robin said, you need to run for president this year. And ever since I've either been president, treasurer, something. Um, and I've taken like two or three years off here and there between having a child during the time or, you know, just I'm burnt out and I need a year break. Um, yeah. But I always go back, like I'm president this wow. year. And every year I'm like, I'm back here again. <laughs> well, what, keep, what keeps you coming back, Heather, to leadership? Um. The first thing I like is I just love the camaraderie. We really, um, in the Lancaster chapter, the officers, we really just develop a really good, strong friendship. Um, the members are very involved and we try to involve the members and it's fun. Um, I, I just get excitement when you see someone new coming in and they're starting out and they come to you and they say, I just landed the job or I'm going into cardiology, can you tutor me? I've tutored a couple of people and they've gotten their um, certifications. And then I started teach, I've been teaching now at one of our local technical schools and I drag them to these AAPC events and um, that's, it's rewarding. Wow, that's great. Thank you so much for doing that. And uh, you know, AAPC wouldn't be what it is without members who serve. I mean, because you, you proctor the exams. I'm sure you, you've done that for years and know that process in and out and, um, and just educating yeah. the community. Yeah, and you create some really great friendships along the way. It doesn't, I mean, the first couple, you know, went to regionals and you're like, I don't know no one. But over time, you just get to know some of the officers. I mean, Rita Genovese, Donna Hart, they're just, you create some awesome bonds and it's yeah. so worth it. I was speaking a member to a member earlier, and they said that um, every job change that they've they've had um, when they've stepped up um, has be been because of relationships they had through AAPC. Absolutely, I was approached at I was actually doing a presentation as a president that year on a cardiology coding, and while I was presenting, it was I was approached and said, "Can you meet me after?" And I said, "Yeah." And during that, she's, I was asked, you know, can you consider taking this job in Philly? I work in Lancaster, Philly. Is a, I was like, I have to drive there. I have to, I was scared. Like it was all outside of the box, but it was so yeah. worth it. I've seen you, so many things. Have you worked at home, Heather? I know that that's appealing to some pr prospective coders. Um, have you taken that route at all? I have worked from home for eight years now since okay. I've left with the company to fill in Philly. So okay. for eight years, I've worked from home. And um, do you prefer that? Do you think it's um, um, overhyped? Um, what are your feelings about working from home coders? I think it is definitely a learned, a learned um, workplace. 
Um, and what I mean by that is very easy to fall into the pattern of wake up and just go to work. And before you know it, you just work straight through the day. You didn't do anything else but work and you don't leave the house. And so um, you do have to learn um, time management in a different sense of you have to act like you're going to the office. Yes. Um, the other thing I know that can happen and it, as the position I'm in now really work to prevent it is isolation. Um, and, you know, not leaving the house. Um, yeah. So the office, the office has its pros because you have that live experience with your coworker. So, yeah. you know, you have to use all the tools, Zoom and, and you know, the phone and, and figure out some creative ways to keep the camaraderie, you know, camaraderie going. Yes. So uh, how long have you been an APC member for? Just doing the math in my head, I, I, I'm here in about 15 years or more. Back in 01 probably is when I joined. Okay. So what so is that? 20, that's, 20 years. That's 20 years, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. wow. And yeah. tell me about the certifications that you hold, Heather. I currently hold uh, my CPC. Okay. Um, which is the standard, the CCC in the cardiology, and okay. I also hold the instructor certification. Okay, is that the, the CPCI? The CPCI. Okay, and how has that helped you? Well, what, um, what were your intents with that? The CPCI, my intent originally was, um, I had a lot of people contacting me to tutor them, um, and I wanted to at least have the certification to say, yeah, I can tutor you or work with you. And I wanted to pursue teaching on the side, not full time. Um, and uh, once I got my CPCI, I applied at a technical school and I was a guest speaker for them for quite a while. Okay. So once I felt like I had the requirement, um, I think it was just a pressure put on myself and achievement I wanted to accomplish. Um, I just wanted that ability to say, yes, I know this enough to instruct it. Okay, great. And do you have any um, ambitions to build on that or are you good? And that's okay if you're good. I'm currently working through um, the CPMA study manual. That's the next one. And then um, I joined, what is it? Healthcare Compliance Association. Cause I do wanna, I wanna pursue my compliance degree. Okay. All right. And um, what I'm just thinking about the students who are watching or those who are thinking about this as a career path, um, what kind of um, information or what would you tell them about this career? I mean, you know, you know how difficult it can be to you're reading about a, a job online. What are the realities of, of being a coder? The realities, um, as I tell my students, Number one, when you when you complete your CPC and you start from entry level, number one, take what you can get. And what I mean by that is if you have um, the desire to work in OB, or for instance, for me, it was cardiology, take that entry level position and create your relationships because that one relationship can sometimes just excel your career. Um, don't, and I always say, don't overpressure yourself. And what I mean by that is I've had some students that, you know, fail by that one or two points on the exam. Um, don't give up. Just, I have a student right now that, you know, um, she, she missed, you know, she didn't pass one of the ICD-10 courses. And she's like, I'm not quitting until I do this. And I'm like, you know what, that drive makes a good coder. Um, and it's, it, it's a fun career. It is, it creates, um, you create really good relationships with physicians. Um, it's not always fun. <laughs> it is not, it can be dry, it can be intense. Um, you have to learn good communication because coding sometimes is very subjective. Mm -hmm. So um, you have to have a backbone, um, but be tactful and, you know, diplomatic and everything that you deal with with it um and I guess that's pretty much it I mean like I've, I've 
personally for me, I've, I've had some awesome experiences. I've seen places I've never would have seen, you know, places in Detroit and Philly, Michigan, um, Idaho. Um, so there's a lot of pros, um, but it's not, it's not all roses either, uh, but to put in the work, but if you're willing to put in the work, it's so worth it. And it's rewarding. Heather, you use the word intense. Mm -hmm. How can medical coding get intense? Give us an example of what that might look like. Um, well, you have deadlines. Okay. Um, I, you know, I can have a physician who really believes something could be coded in a manner and it's totally not correct. Um, and then you have to look at the compliance end of that. So there's a lot of preparation for those meetings and those meetings can get quite fun. Um, they're, they, they're passionate, you're passionate and um, it's just intense sometimes, okay. but it's very rewarding. It's a rewarding career. So no regrets from, from you? Ever? No, I no. I can never say. I, my husband tells me I work all the time. You know, is this all you you know? Are you doing? You're reading another. You're watching <laughs> another webinar. But you're talking about cooning again. But it's you know, it's my word. Find. Do you ever play those word games? Like even the students, they're like, you know, we could buy books and play word games, and you don't have to buy a word game notebook. You know, no more. Art. You know, coding is that word game. Mm -hmm. So I just have fun with it all the time. Awesome. That's so that's so great to hear. Now, um, you you mentioned the challenges of of students or examinees who've struggled um, to pass the exam. Um, mm -hmm. I'd say that next level, like after they pass the exam, uh, for some it may be finding that first position. And everybody's path is different. Yours is different, um, uh, and some. Um, you know, we see it on the Facebook groups, um, some individuals struggle. Um, what advice do you give to newly certified members who are seeking their first job as a CPCA? As a CPCA, I would say don't, number one, don't set your expectations unrealistically. Um, and what I mean by that is an unrealistic, for, in my opinion, is I'm going to work remote. I'm going to only get jobs that are remote. When all you're doing is applying for those type of positions, you're cutting your chances way down. I think you just have to be very open-minded and apply pretty much to anything and everything um, that's there as an opportunity. Um, even if you do, uh, you know, you take something and in the meantime, still keep applying even if it's an entry level position that you really didn't want and you're still applying elsewhere, you're gaining something out of that experience. How, how does um, networking with local chapters and those relationships that, um, that a new coder can build, how important are they? And do you, have you seen those relationships pay off for, uh, for newly certified coders in your chapter? Um, absolutely. Um, I have had, I've seen new, I've had some, uh, actually some students that I've tutored, you know, attend um, the AAPC events with me or other instructors um, that I've worked with. And we've taught and mentored them on how to network. And um, I've seen um, newer students or people that are new. Um, be able to handle themselves in such a professional manner, learn how to network appropriately, basically sell themselves in that professional manner that I've seen managers say, you know what, I'm going to give you the opportunity and I have an entry level position. I'll give you six months to accomplish A, B and C. As long as you do that, we'll be good. Um, and that networking that they that that you know uh, new that that new coder did. That's why they got it. Um, wow! Because it wouldn't even been you know, I've seen managers create things because somebody just is showing the effort. And I think networking and showing up the APC events um, for me personally as a manager, when I see that, I know they have the drive. And sometimes, honestly, I've seen 
straight A coders where they may have gotten a, cr a crazy, you know, 90% score on their CPC exam. And I've seen coders that have worked so um, hard just to pass it and not quit. And then they want to do things with the chapter. And then the one that didn't have to try just comes and leaves and kind of just you don't see ambition or you don't see that fire, I would pick the one that, that's done the networking and is trying and doesn't have that, you know, has that I'm not gonna quit attitude. Yes, yes. As you say all of that, Heather, I, I think about those soft skills um, that aren't uh, taught in the exam. You know, the exam prepares you for all of, all of those things that you'll be performing as a coder. And giving you those tools, but there's this other side of carrying yourself professionally, um, getting yeah. along with others, and that's so critical. Absolutely. I mean, they say APC, you know, coding and CPCs and coders are introverts, but um, we still, I don't, no matter, we still are dealing with each other in a professional manner, and there is communication skills that we have to have. Um, especially with dealing with a physician. So as I watch new, you know, new members and newly certified uh, coders networking, we observe and watch, you know, how are they interacting? And I've approached people, the newer, you know, some new members and said, you know, why don't you run for office for this? We need a secretary or we need this. And um, it opens so many doors. Wow. That's so great to hear. Now, I, did I hear you say you, you had been to a regional conference? Yes. Or two, okay. Yes. And have you been to a health con or national conference? Not yet. I wanted to go um, this year, but I still debate it. Um, yeah. I, there's some speakers that um, this year were at health con and I was like, I wanna go, uh -huh. but I, I, I didn't. So well, next year we're in DC, we're close to you. I know I was just I was just speaking to um, one of my colleagues and I'm like we're going right you know DC's next on the list <laughs> I said yeah. okay where we are with the pandemic it's hopefully done but we're going I um I think there is a um le there are there are levels of um APC community that you can feel um you know you might be in a classroom and and going through that experience with your with your classmates, but then you go into local chapters and you feel some camaraderie. And I I think that grows, um, and you see the vastness of the AAPC family. And I'm, um, what was it like um, attending a regional conference versus attending your local chapter meeting? Did did you feel uh, a greater strength and unity? Did you were there a lot of people there to rely on and learn from? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> I, that regional conference, Dr. Z um, spoke. What is his, I, I can't pronounce his last name, but Dr. Z, I was looking at my own book to see if it's spelling. But Dr. Z is like top in interventional radiology. That's how um, he, he's the instructor of it. He, we call him the father coding of it. But um, he was presenting and uh, my coworker and I, we were like, we gotta hurry up. We gotta be at front and royal. I said, we feel like we're seeing a movie star. <laughs> and, um, we actually sat and spoke to him for like a half an hour, 45 minutes outside of the, um, the, the lecture. Um, so that was neat. And like, there's some people that like um, Rita, you know, there's, there's other chapter members or, you know, uh, officers. So you only see them at, conferences or only read an article on them or only um, maybe hear them on a webinar or something. So when you have, when you see them and you talk to them and, and things, it's it's fun. And um, to meet with other coders that are in your same base. And then when you sit at the tables and meet with different people, I've created some great friendships just with meeting with them for like the three days we're there. Yeah. Um, and some great contacts, like I've met with people from Alaska, and and we message on Facebook, hey, do you have a question? You know, do you know this answer? Or oh, you know, huh. how are you doing? So yeah, it's a, it's just, it grows your uh, network. I'll say this other before um, I joined the AP, APC family, I did not know anything about medical coding, and then okay. you you come in and. It, 
you realize quickly how big the APC family is. You know, we're over 200,000 members strong. And when you go to these conferences, you just feel so much, so much great energy and see yeah. how um, important um, uh, medical coders are to the healthcare world. Yes, absolutely. It's great. I mean, and as you say about the APC, one of the things um, with the students that I tell them, you know, you do the interview process because they learn both the soft and hard skills. Um, I say, I don't care how much you hate a job in coding. I don't care. Do not burn that bridge. I said, you leave with every ounce of dignity and respect and professionalism. Because I said, if you burn that bridge, I can guarantee you that manager knows somebody who knows somebody that knows somebody that when you apply for that next job, you you just burn your bridges across the board. So yeah. there's definitely- so true. It's different um employee employment world mm. it really is um my new boss that they brought in as a director um i got called on a friday you have a new boss okay monday morning i found out her name and i was like oh i already know her <laughs> but and she lives in jersey but and she's like oh i remember you you were at conference and da, 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 da. but that's how small how small we are but how large we are that's that interesting. I mean, yeah, that, I completely agree. And that's what I was just going to say. We are so big and there's so many coders, um, but it is such a tight knit circle and community. Um, and you get to know everybody across the country. Yeah. So that's awesome. Well, Heather, as we wind down, um, what, um, what advice would you give to um, new students or those who are thinking about this as a career path? Um, if you're thinking about it as a career path, um, it's definitely a challenge and well worth the challenge. And if you're working towards your certification, don't give up, set your goals realistic, make them manageable and just pursue it because it's accomplishable. But don't give up. Don't if give you have up. Your, if you have your eyes uh, set um, on that goal, stick with it. Never give up on it. I mean, for example, like I said, I failed my break two points and cried for five days. It was horrible. Oh, man. But um, I didn't quit. And I'm glad I didn't. So don't, don't quit. If that's what you want, pursue it. Um, and find mentors because I think everybody in the APC wants to see others succeed. Agreed completely. We there is space for um, for everybody, and there's so many paths. That's what's amazing, Heather. Is like you you come in as a coder, yet the different um, opportunities beyond that are exactly. just so many. Yeah, I cannot agree more. Well, Heather, I'd like to conclude by asking you to say with your with the most vigor that you can, I am AAPC. I am AAPC. Wonderful. Thanks, Heather. And thank you so much for your time and sharing your story with the AAPC membership and future coders. Uh, we hope you found this useful. And that's a wrap. Thanks so much for your time, Heather. Thank you.